Good evening. Our opening sentence this evening comes from John's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. This is the day that Christ, our God, gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. Our collect for this evening is, O oh God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 to 14, the first Passover instituted. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. You shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Psalm 116, verses 10 to 17. Thanksgiving for recovery from illness. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I say to my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bounds. 
I will offer to you a thanksgiving service and call on the name of the Lord. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11. The institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the, the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God. Got up from the table. He took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later on you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed the feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also are to wash one another's feet. For I have set an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It's Monday, Thursday, and this year we're not gathering in church. The Monday Thursday service is a very moving one for me. When at the close, we strip the church of all the holy hardware and then snuff out the votive candle, which represents the presence of God in our midst. As we prepare for Good Friday, the crucifixion and death of Jesus, we experience the pain of separation from God just as Jesus did in those last few moments on the cross when he took our sin upon himself so we could be reconciled to God. One night last week, I woke with these words going around in my head. I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever. Psalm 145, verse 1. I got up and wrote them in my notebook because I didn't want to forget the experience. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. That's what the people lining the route were doing, praising Jesus and shouting Hosanna as he rode on the donkey to Jerusalem. Hosanna is a combination of two Greek words, savior and helper. And it's an expression of joy and praise. The Pharisees told Jesus to keep the people quiet, and his answer was, if they were quiet, even the stones would cry out. I've been following Jesus' journey to the cross in the Gospel of John. Jesus has repeatedly said that the hour has not yet come. But now in John 13, we read that the hour had come. Our Lord journeys to Jerusalem and sends his disciples ahead to find the upper room where they will have the last supper together. Jesus was preparing to wash their feet and give them a new commandment. It was as though he was combining all his teaching and miracles from the past three years into these two actions. During the supper, he took off his outer robe and tied a towel around his waist. When we gather on Monday, Thursday, that's what Reverend Kim does. She takes off her surplus and puts a towel around her waist and proceeds to wash our feet, a symbol of her servant ministry and a remembrance of what Jesus did for his disciples. He washed everyone's feet, including Judas, even though the scriptures tell us that he knew who would betray him. Simon Peter speaks for all of them, I believe, when he says, you will never wash my feet. Reading between the lines, it's as though he said, we should be washing your feet. Listen carefully to Jesus' answer. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. This for Simon Peter is unimaginable just like the idea of Jesus leaving them and going back to his father. Peter then goes to the other extreme, no half measures for him, that in that case, wash my whole body. Jesus gently explains it's only the feet that need washing. All the disciples are clean otherwise, except the one who will betray him. Jesus told them he was setting an example. Even though he was teacher and Lord, he was their servant. And that is what they must be to each other and those they encounter. He said, children, I will be with you just a little while longer. Where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. How did Jesus love them? With unconditional love, by serving them, by encouraging them, by teaching them. All these things that we must do for each other. When I'm preparing the reflection, I often struggle as to which tense, present, or past I should use. 
I love to use the present tense as it makes the story more current and more alive. I was listening to the Dean from Canterbury Cathedral and he said that Jesus always speaks in the present tense, listing as an example all his I am statements. He said this brings these thoughts and ideas into our present day for us to act upon. So listen to Jesus' words in the present tense. Love one another as I have loved you. This is what we must do. Love, encourage, serve, and pray for each other constantly. By this, everyone will know that we are disciples of Jesus. Amen. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. The prayers of the people. On this holy day, we would normally dine together <clears throat> as the body of Christ and at the table come to love and serve one another. Because of the pandemic and our social distancing, we will recall the disciples gathering with our Lord and the command given to them to love one another in this way. On this holy day, then let us pray for the church and the world saying, Lord, in your mercy, grant that we may not so much seek to be loved as to love. And now we pray for the whole church of God that it may grow in unity and servanthood. Help us to know that we are connected by the one who created us all. Lord, in your mercy, grant that we may not so much seek to be loved as to love. For our congregation, for all congregations and all churches and congregations in the Diocese of Toronto, that in these holy days we may grow in love for one another and for all people. Lord, in your mercy, grant that we may not so much seek to be loved as to love. For all the leaders and people of the world, that reconciliation and peace may overcome conflict and oppression. Lord, in your mercy, grant that we may not so much seek to be loved as to love. For the hungry in body or spirit, that they may be fed. For the Diocese of Jerusalem, to have all that it needs to protect and sustain the fragile Christian presence in our holy land, Lord. In your mercy, grant that we may not so much seek as to be loved as to love. And for the sick and those in pain, for the lonely and the forgotten, and for the dying and all who mourn, that they may know the full extent of God's love for them. Lord, in your mercy, grant that we may not so much seek to be loved as to love. For those in harm's way, for all who live in violence and fear every day, that they all be protected and strengthened. Lord, in your mercy, grant that we may not so much seek to be loved as to love. For all who have died, that they be granted an entrance into the land of light and joy. Lord, in your mercy, grant that we may not so much seek to be loved as to love. In thanksgiving for the saints and martyrs and for all the faithful departed who join us at your table of grace, Lord, in your mercy, Grant that we may not so much seek to be loved as to love. O oh God, into your love we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, knowing that Christians throughout the world gather in Jerusalem this night with us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. And now as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. O oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And for all those of us who are offering gifts, our tithes, let us lift up our offering to God our Father as we say, Father, we spread this table to remember the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Son. Accept all we offer you this day. Bind us together in his great love and in the love he has commanded us to bring to one another through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.